Hello everyone. Welcome to Paint the Town Dead. It's a lovely Monday evening, a light rain outside, just dusk coming upon us. Hope you all have had a blessed beginning of your week. This is Paint the Town Dead. That's and right. Let's get hyped. <laughs> Let's go. Paint the town dead, baby. I told Andrew, I was like, I'm going to do something different for the intro. He's like, okay. <laughs> we need some air horns in here. Yeah. You know what I'm talking and about? Techno music. No, no. That's that horn. Yeah, the air horn. Okay. Anyways, uh, that was my NPR opening for you. Uh, that was mine too. <laughs> National Public Radio, hire me. One we- one time, NPR said fart, and I lost it because oh I was like, gosh. "These are like high IQ uppity folks," and somebody said fart on NPR. That's sort of like how uh, news articles a lot of times will like pull from like Reddit posts or something. And it's like user fart master sixty nine four twenty said whatever. <laughs> it's like, what are you doing, news people? Don't don't directly quote them. You don't, you don't need to do this. Oh, that's hilarious. And these people are like typing it up in their little cubicles. And they're like, <laughs> I have to put this in the newspaper. They're like, where did I go wrong? <laughs> they just put their head, head, heads in their hands. And they're just like, I've I've gone so wrong. Fart masters. I make no money because I'm a journalist. And I have all this student loan debt. And I think you I'm need to, writing about fart masters. But here's what I think. I think you need to go ahead and claim that username because somebody's going to take it now. Fart master season 9420? Yeah, that's yours. Okay. If, I'll, it's not I'll, our, if it's not already taken, I'll which go look it into prob- it. Probably is. That's a sad thing. You'd think so. It yeah. has to be. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. But yeah, it should be. Yeah. If it isn't, um, it's you. That's Andrew. Yeah, I'm going to go do that. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Well, um, as I said, this is Paint the Town Dead. Um, we are unlike NPR in a lot of ways, but we're also like NPR in a lot of ways. Yeah, we say woo woo. We do. That's what we're about. <laughs> and and we have really renowned guests on um, ourselves. We're we're the guests every week. That's right, Fartmaster sixty nine four twenty in the house. <laughs> is it is it available? I don't know. I haven't looked. That's hilarious. I'm sure it's available on something. Yeah, uh, you're gonna find something to put it on. If nothing else, I can change my like Twitter name to that. Yeah, that's right. Because it'll just let you be anything. Yeah. Other than your at thing. So maybe um, I'll look into that. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm Andrew, by the way. I don't think we've Am said I our Ka- names. I think I said my... No, I didn't. I'm Caitlin. I think I interrupted you when you were going to. We're the guests every week on this show. Special guests, Caitlin and Andrew, every week on this show, every Tuesday. Every... Most Tuesdays. Most Tuesdays, except for the 59th episode gap. Yes, that one. A couple of airplane mishaps... Uh, sicknesses. Yeah, all those things. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, t- he, uh, we are a true crime podcast and we talk about true crimes committed in Arkansas. Some, all, actually, all are really terrible. Yeah, we haven't had any good crimes yet. I don't. <laughs> we have had some survival ones, which yeah. th- those are a little happier ending, if you can call it that, and you can really garner something from it. You can garner something from every case, which I think we do, but. So the survival ones really get me, get me, you know, those are, those are pretty, pretty rough, pretty, you know. Good. Here. It's yeah. in the heart. I'm pointing to my chest. Feelings. Th- yeah. That's it. Feelings. What are those? I, that's, uh, I, 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 <laughs> what just happened to you? <laughs> what is, why, oh why gosh. did you just like lose it there? <laughs> It's like your brain split in half on you or something. I'm struggling. Okay. Let's go to it. Woo woo. Okay. Woo woo. Okay. So like we said, this is Paint the Town Dead. And this week, special guest Caitlin, me, <laughs> I'm going to be telling the story. Excellent. And it's kind of a longer one. Um, you know how I be. No, I don't. Okay. Well, it's kind of a longer one, but it's one that, okay, there were like a couple episodes of a couple different things. I had it, but um, what I watched was season seven, episode two of Killer Couples to get pretty much most of my information. Also, season six, I can't remember what episode, but season six of Snapped, they have an episode about this too. It's on the same channel. Are those oxygen Yeah, it's on oxygen. Um, I didn't watch the Snapped one because I watched the 45 minute Killer Couples one. Well, I was going to say like um, ID sometimes has like, they they double and triple dip the Cassie Cotta thing they, yep. they had three different shows cover that one yeah not wild 
It is. So, um, season six of Snapped had this. Um, got some information from Arkansas Online, and then some from NBC News for this story. And tonight, today, today, we are talking about um, the murder of Janie Ballard and those who committed it. So let's start with Leslie Ballard. Leslie Ballard, daughter of Janie, was born in 1976 into an elite, well-respected, and well-off family in Little Rock. Her father, uh, Lester, and her mother, Janie, owned Shepherd's Printing, which was like a well-known, well-off business. They did all sorts of printing stuff there. She was the only child. She was very much loved and doted on, um, especially by her father. Uh, But even with all their wealth, Leslie was kind of described as being shy, reserved. She wasn't flashy or arrogant, even though she had like nice things and she went to private schools. She was still very like down to earth. So after high school, Leslie left home and went to the University of Arkansas in Fayetteville to pursue a business degree, which she obtained. And when she graduated, she returned to Little Rock, the one true city, to the family and the family business, uh, which was Shepherds. Her parents were just so pleased with this that they bought her a new house, a new car. They gave her a comfortable salary and she seemed perfect, perfectly happy. Everything was going well, but she kind of harbored some secret feelings of like wanting more. Like she kind of craved a little bit of danger and excitement and nobody really knew that side of Leslie. So that was kind of a hidden side of her because she thought she had to need, need to be like the good Catholic girl, like helping run mom and dad's business and, you know, being holding that image. And I'm guessing like what you normally do in that situation is like um, you buy a motorcycle. Some people do. Yeah. I'm guessing that's what she does. Wear a little eyeliner. Um, maybe dye your hair. Um, yeah. Have a lady <laughs> mohawk. Yeah. That's what people with that feeling would like. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but you can get a motorcycle helmet that has the top cut out a little bit so you can put your mohawk through it. That's way cool. It is very cool. Andrew, you know how to live life. I I know how to tell other people to live life. Okay. There we go. I don't know how to live life. (laughs) Okay. It's a disaster. So now we're going to talk about a fellow named Mike. Wow. It really started raining out there big time. Yeah. Woo woo. (laughs) Mike McCool. So similar to Leslie, that's a very cool name. Muck, Matt Cool, M A C K O O L, Matt Cool, Matt Cool. So similar to Leslie, Mike was raised in Little Rock in a wealthy, nice home. Um, but unlike Leslie, his spoiled childhood led him to be kind of a bit lost in life, a little bit adrift because he was used to getting whatever he wanted whenever he wanted, uh, which kind of led him to be a bit of kind of wild and reckless growing up. People said he was popular, but very quick-tempered, quick to anger. This all sounds like you. <laughs> Excuse <laughs> you. <laughs> Except for the popular part, sorry. It's true. Gotcha. Yeah, that, no, I'll take that. You're right. So his anger issues were so severe that his parents kind of like worried where life would take him, like jail. So, but Mike decided to join the Marines when he was 17, and his parents kind of hoped that would give him some self-discipline and turn his life around. So after a few years, when he returned from the military back to Little Rock, Mike seemed like he was doing a lot better. He got a job as a landscaper. At some point, he got married. He was constantly working out and trying to keep his fit physique that he obtained in the military. But by the time he was 40, Mike had already been through two, maybe three failed marriages. But he was hopeful for the next one. What do you mean, maybe three? Uh, one article said, the show said um, he had been through two. An article I read from PC, NBC said he'd been through three. So I don't know which one's true. Either way, it's quite a bit by the age of 40. So while at the gym one day, he laid eyes on, of course, Miss Leslie and decided that she was going to be Mrs. McCool number three, possibly number four. I don't know at this point, but she was going to be the next Mrs. McCool. By the way... He was 47 and she was 24. I see nothing wrong with this. I mean, okay. (laughs) That's a lot of, a lot of growing up in between those years. Yeah. And like, like I said, he'd already been married multiple times. He had kids and Leslie had not been married, didn't have kids, nothing like that. She was still very, um, sheltered, I would say. It does violate the rule of half your age plus seven. There you go. So. Mm, See? Okay. So Leslie was just totally smitten with this guy. And he was just like Mr. Schmoozy, Mr. Charisma. He like put on the moves and he was like, he just seemed really cool to her. And the two began dating. 
Um, it was very hot. It was very heavy. They were obsessed with each other. Leslie's parents were very displeased, especially learning that Mike was unemployed and only got money from part-time landscaping gigs and the occasional loan from his parents. But Leslie had said that she had plenty of money for the both of them. She had a great income. Of course, she had her parents. So she had plenty of money to cover both of them. Not long after they began dating, the two quickly started to blow through said money. Um, her savings, inheritance, money she made from her job. Buying, you guessed it, Andrew, motorcycles and fast cars. I'm so smart. You are. I'm only smart on accident, though. Good job. So I'm really proud of you. There is that. <laughs> All of her money went to Mike, except for the money he encouraged her to spend on herself with plastic surgeries, hair dyeing, and skimpy clothes to turn her into his dream girl, which is like change. I like who you are. Change everything is basically what just happened. Like you're okay, but what if? But what if you changed absolutely everything about yourself? Yeah. So probably not a good thing. Yeah, That's, That's the problem I always have when dating girls. They're always like, Andrew, you you're great, everything. but whew, you need to change everything about yourself <laughs> or this is not going to work. I'm like, well, I'm not changing for nobody. And they say, well, this isn't going to work. Bye. Okay. Like, oh, okay, cool. Okay. So <laughs> that's all, how it goes. So all this out of character behavior really drove a wedge between Leslie and her parents. They, of course, encouraged her to leave Mike and come home to them. But Leslie wasn't having it. This was her, her honey boo. She was totally obsessed with him honey boo boo you might say mm. in 2002 the I, like, two, I like your reaction is like no mm-mm. no andrew i disagree with who that. do you think you are who do you think you are so in 2002 the two would tie the knot in hot springs leslie's parents and nobody else were invited they just eloped on top of a tower and like i said it was just leslie and mike and some tourists as witnesses so that was very out of character Leslie's parents learned of the marriage a few weeks later, and they were absolutely heartbroken. So Leslie's father, Lester, he began to just kind of take up heavy drinking. He kind of struggled with alcohol, I think, some through his life, but he really took up heavy drinking, seeing his only daughter just spiral down in his eyes. And um, his heavy drinking quickly deteriorated his health. And in August of 2003, about a year later, Lester died, and Leslie was on a trip in Florida with Mike. She didn't even know that he died. Um, She found out after his funeral, actually. So, saddened by his passing, Leslie reached out to her mother, and their relationship appeared to be getting better, and as they kind of, like, bonded over loss of, the loss of Lester. So, that brings us to about a month later, on September 12th, 2003. A friend of Janie Ballard, um, came to check on her, Janie again being Leslie's mom. A friend of Janie's came to check on her in her home. This guy's name is Mickey Holloway. He was a off-duty police officer for the Little Rock PD. And he had been trying to call and call and call her and trying to get a hold of her and could not get a hold of her. So he wanted to go by and kind of like do a wellness check. He was off-duty just to make sure everything was okay and like lay eyes on her. When he drove to her, her house, he noticed that her garage door is open, which was kind of unusual, but he kind of like went ahead and walked in there, let himself in, and her door was unlocked, so he went ahead and walked into the house. When he did, he saw Janie lying on the floor of her home, just absolutely covered in blood. There was blood everywhere. So knowing, clearly seeing that this was a crime scene, and he could clearly see that she was passed, he stepped out of the house, moved out of the house and immediately called the police and was like reported what was going on. So when police got there, they noticed that there was, there were dozens of stab wounds or stab wounds everywhere as well as like a massive laceration, a slice across Janie's neck. It was like from ear to ear. It was very deep. So when they searched the home, investigators found some expensive jewelry missing an expensive coin collection and a luxury vehicle. They were all missing. I think it was a Cadillac. So clothes and belongings were just like strewn everywhere. They were all over the house, all over Janie's room. But police noticed that it kind of appeared that they were like haphazardly strewn out. Like not that somebody was looking for something, but that they were just like pulling clothes out. So they thought it was a very staged scene. And they also noted that Janie's injuries were very intimate, very violent and very personal. And so they kind of were thinking like 
this doesn't seem like the work of an intruder that's interrupted. It, this kind of looks like a crime that was committed by somebody Janie knew. This kind of looks like, you know, personal. So with the theory that Janie likely knew her killer, investigators kind of started digging into her past to check on enemies that she might have, any grievances, anything like that. So when the police reached out to employees of the print business, several of them said there was an employee who was recently fired and did not take it well at all. Like as he was being fired and leaving, he was calling threats out to Janie saying he was going to hurt her. He's going to hurt his family. And all Don't do that. Stuff. Yeah. Bad idea. It's especially, even if you're, uh, well, probably especially if you're not going to do anything bad, because then people will be like, he probably did the bad thing. Yeah. Let's get him. Yeah. Everybody get him. Don't threaten anybody. Yeah. No, especially when you're it. being fired from a job and it's, it's something, don't do it. Don't yeah. do it. So, uh, didn't take it well. So when detectives found that employee, he did admit that he made the threats towards Janie when he was fired, but he claimed that he had nothing to do with her murder. Turns out he had an alibi that day of the murder and the day that Janie was found and they were solid. So dead end. Investigators turned to Mickey, Janie's friend that found her to see if he knew of anyone who wanted to harm Janie. Surprisingly, he said he thinks he thought he did. Janie's own daughter and her husband, Mike. Mickey explained that their relationship was very strained because Janie vehemently disapproved of Mike. She did not like Mike um, for many reasons, but the main one is because of a heinous crime in his past that he had committed. You see, the reason why Mike had enlisted in the military at 17 was become, because of a crime he had committed. One night, Mike took... He and some of his friends, they went on a drunken ride around town and his 14 year old friend in the back seat became nauseated and threw up in the back of Mike's very precious, expensive sports car at 17. Like you're going to buy a 17 year old kid a nice sports car. Bad idea. No, you buy them some piece of garbage and you let them drive it till they can pay for everything themselves. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So Mike became so enraged. He pulled over, pulled his friend out of the back seat and beat the crap out of him the beating was so severe that the 14 year old died at the hospital the next day i mean he beat him to death basically mark I mean, mike was charged with murder but the judge said you can join the military or go to jail so he chose the military was it you that was talking about like how many people in the military are are convicts basically no um i think they stopped doing this for the most part though where they're like you should go join the military instead of jail because i think the military is like please Full stop convicts yeah, yeah exactly please stop. yeah i mean it's great like hey I, we know you can kill already so you'll be a good fit for doing military work but uh we need a better rap right now don't don't <laughs> don't do that it's uh yeah i don't i don't think um they do this as much as okay. they used to i think maybe john told me about that i'm not sure it's possible so Anyways, I didn't know that, but apparently they used to recruit a lot from convicts. So Leslie's parents also found out that Mike had filed for bankruptcy multiple times and had multiple big financial problems, which was a really big problem in their eyes as Leslie was the financial provider, number one, and would likely inherit the shepherd's business. And so they didn't want any of that in Mike's hands. So Leslie's parents knew she had been blowing through her trust fund for Mike and like all the money they gave her but found out that she was also blowing through their money too. You see, Leslie, or rather <laughs> Janie and Lester, had footed the bill for an expensive ski vacation to the tune of $15,000 on the Shepherd's credit card, on the, on the business's credit card. Like, Leslie booked an entire ski trip on that credit card. Can you imagine getting your statement and being like, there's a charge for $15,000? Um, excuse me, what? I get surprised when I see a statement that's like, you spent $5 on a thing. I'm like, I did? <laughs> I did? Oh, right. Yes, I did. Or the worst is... Um, when you didn't. <laughs> when... Well, I always get freaked out because uh, PlayStation, their store, mm -hmm. if you get something off there that's free, they'll mm -hmm. still send you an email. It's like, your purchase was blah, blah, blah. I'm yeah. like, my, my I what? Did, I didn't purchase anything. And I click on it. It's like, oh, it's that free thing. Never mind. We're good. Your, okay. We're good. Everything's fine. Yeah. So... Knowing all this, all this accumulation of knowledge, Lester just finally had to cut Leslie off. Like he was like, no access to funds, no money. You've disproven yourself. So one last mark against Leslie. Unbeknownst to her, Lester had altered his will before he died. 
And instead of receiving the hundreds of thousands of dollars she thought she was going to receive when Lester died, Lester reduced her inheritance to $25,000. And Leslie was furious and confronted her mother with Mike on the, about that on about September 7th. And the confrontation did not go well. It was very heated. It Sounds bad. like it. I mean, 25000 that's not even enough for two ski trips based on what they're spending. <laughs> it's not. I would be very happy to inherit $25,000. Oh, for real. I'd be happy for $500. i would be happy for five. Yeah. Any money. Somebody gives me five bucks. I'm walking on air. I'm happy as can be. So she was very upset that it went from hundreds of thousands of dollars to $25,000 that she inherited when her father passed. So with all this information, when investigators went to question the suspicious couple, they were not at their West Little Rock apartment. But when investigators were leaving, Mike and Leslie pulled up. So they're like, hey, we have some questions for you guys. We've heard some things. So when they confronted the couple to tell them that Janie had been murdered, because they didn't even think that, like, they would have been the first people to tell the couple. So when investigators confronted the couple to tell them that Janie had been murdered, the reactions were a little odd. Leslie seemed kind of unfazed, like she wasn't crying. She was just kind of like blank. And Mike just kind of flew off the handle and he was like crying and yelling and screaming and blah just tears and just acting like a crazy person and he kept grabbing leslie and asking are you okay are you i think he was like trying to cue her like cry now's your time to cry and cry and so he just kept grabbing her and asking her if she was okay and she was just kind of like blank so it was odd behavior very odd yes it's like uh when you're trying to cue your friend up for something and they're uh-huh. not getting what you're wanting <laughs> yeah. you, know, they're, 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 you just stare at them and they're like what and you're it, like Pick Come up, on. Pick up on it. I'm trying my hardest. What are you doing? So I think that's what was happening here. Like, come on, Leslie. You're supposed to be crying. I'm crying. You cry. Your your mom was murdered and you're just now hearing about it and, and action. The scene has been set up. Go. So police asked the couple to each give their statements about their whereabouts and all that jazz at the time of Janie's murder. So they both came down to the police station and they were put in separate rooms to give their separate statements. But they gave identical accounts absolutely identical accounts we went over to my mom's house and killed her (laughs) nope that's not it i don't know what it was but that wasn't it okay so when they asked um when they asked leslie about her and her mother's relationship leslie stated that it was a great one that they get along they were very close they they'd kind of grown apart but they'd really come back together and bonded over the death of lester and she said she didn't even care about the the decreased inheritance. It, that's That didn't matter to her. She just loved her mom so much and it was all about family. And Mike described his relationship with Janie Ideal. He said it was a great uh, son-in-law, mother-in-law relationship and they got along fine. But police knew all of this was absolute garbage according to multiple people's testimonies. So one detective finally like sat Leslie down, confronted her with the facts, all the testimony they had from different people and said, you're lying and you're going to feel a lot better if you just told me the truth. So Leslie just kind of took a deep breath and said, okay, but it's not good. (laughs) Just like that. So didn't see that coming. Yeah. And he was like, wait, hold on. What? What? Did that work? (laughs) So Leslie, I wonder how often police officers or detectives are like, wait, that worked. That worked. And they don't say it. They're not like, they're like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So Leslie admitted that the relationship with her parents that she had had become very strained, especially with her mom, since she had been with Mike. It got worse when her father died and her mom, like they were so, they hadn't talked for so long. Like her mom did not call her to tell her that her father had died while she was on her trip. She found out when she came back and then when Leslie came to her mom's house to like talk to her about it. Um, she saw that a lot of Lester's belongings were gone. Like a lot of knickknacks were kind of taken off the shelves and stuff. And um, she had sold, uh, Janie had sold one of his Cadillacs, that Cadillac. So her father's dying wish was that their family money would stay out of the hands of Mike. And Janie said she intended to see that through. And that was the last straw for Leslie, she said. She said when Leslie told Mike about the money and everything. He was furious saying that Leslie and he deserved the money, deserved better. So he obtained a copy of the will and read over it to attempt to find kind of like a loophole, which he unfortunately did find. Because according to one of the clauses, 
If Janie died within 30 days of Lester's death, then Leslie would be the beneficiary of all the riches. So not a good clause. No, I wouldn't put that one in there. Don't put it in writing. I'd be like... Because <laughs> that's an if, invitation for murder. Yeah, that'd be more like, if my wife dies within 30 days of me, then all of the money, uh, you put it in my casket and cover it with concrete. Or you donate it. Or something. To, to, to something. I'm taking it with me. Give it to your favorite charity. Yeah. And then you can't take it back. So this really ticked off Mike, but it also gave him... An idea, and I, a very bad idea, and that idea was to kill Janie to get the money. Of course, I mean that's what you do. I've seen movies. Of course, you know, you know, you know. So he kind of staked out Janie's house to figure her day to day schedule for a few days. He said he told Leslie he thought of purchasing a gun to kill Janie, but decided a knife would be harder to trace, so that should be the weapon they used. Also weird that he didn't just already have a gun. Yeah, that is kind of weird, isn't it? He's from Arkansas and he was in the military. Why doesn't he just have guns? But he also was charged with murder, so maybe he could. Oh, yeah. Well, he didn't get like convicted or anything, so. I think he was charged, but his sentence was military time. Gotcha. I guess. It but he was also a minor, so. Yeah, I don't know. So on the morning of September 12th, Mike decided it was time to end Janie's life. The kicker, though, he said Leslie needed to be the one to do it. He said he wasn't going to do it. Leslie had to do it. So when Mike decided it was time, Leslie said she still didn't believe it was true and that it was all talk, but he was serious. So he had Leslie dress in all black and wear boots that were bigger than her size so that if, so that if like footprints were found, they wouldn't come back to her because it would be like she had shoes on almost double the size of her normal foot. So Leslie said she waited in the bushes of her mother's home for her to return investigators still believing mike was the murderer at this point asked where he was in all of this and how he made it into the house to murder janie unless it was like no i'm the one that did it i killed my mother and so they're like oh crap we thought you were setting it up to where mike did it but you did it she just freely admitted that she was the one who had done it so leslie said she had went in through the open garage door before it closed and confronted her mother in the kitchen she then leslie then flies into a rage and begins stabbing her mother she said something just kind of snapped inside of her and she just kept stabbing, which is I, I think is something we hear from overkill people a lot. Something snapped and I couldn't stop. She stabbed her mo- mother a total of 70 times. She said, I thought I only stabbed her a couple. Like she just lost all. That's that, That'll do it. Yeah, 70 times, seven zero. So then... Leslie ransacked the house, took the money, jewelry, and her father's coin collection, just as Mike instructed her to do. Before she left the house, though, she did one last thing. She bent down and she slit Janie's throat deeply from ear to ear, just to leave that one last mark. And during all this, they wanted to know, where was Mike? Mike was waiting in a nearby car, sitting there with a mask and a gun. Leslie then got in the family vehicle, and this is really awful, donned an Afro-type wig and drove to an area of Little Rock that was predominantly black to abandon the vehicle. Leslie and Mike hoped that if all went according to plan, an unsuspecting black person who might have stolen the vehicle would get the flak for the murder. And I was like, well, that was profiling of you and very crappy. So, I mean, it was, yeah. Anyways, I was like, well, you guys are scumbags. So, anywho. So while Leslie is telling this story to investigators at the police station, Mike is in a separate room and he's becoming increasingly anxious and like frantic. And he's asking, where's Leslie? What's she doing? What's she saying? You know, he's just becoming really heated. So when she finally finished the story, told the story, police went to arrest Mike in the next room, but he decided he wasn't going to go down without a fight. So he kind of went berserk and just started like flailing around the room, going off the walls, running around the room, yelling, throwing things and just going berserk. So when he knew he wasn't leaving the room without handcuffs, he barred himself into the room by pushing like a table and chairs against the door, broke a thermostat on the wall, used a metal part of the thermostat to start cutting his wrist to try to commit suicide. Um, They were like trying to be like, Mike, you have to stop, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to convince him. Finally, they finally get the door open, pry it open, slam it open. He wasn't stopping. They got pepper spray and sprayed him to get him to stop. And he did. He stopped after that, as one probably does. Uh, yeah, that's that's what it's there for. Yeah, it kind of hurts. So um, while Mike was cuffed to a hospital bed, 
Leslie continued to work with police and she showed them where she had stashed the bloody clothes, which was in like this random tire filled with rainwater on the side of the road somewhere. Just totally random. So when police went to where she said um, she had stashed the car, it was unfortunately not there and it had been stolen. Uh, But when police went to Mike's parents' house, they found a bag of jewelry that matched the missing jewelry from Janie's home. And they also found a little burn pile nearby with some um, burned evidence from the crime scene. I'm not really specifically sure what that was, but it just said some burned evidence. So when Mike was released from the hospital, he finally began cooperating, that's quote marks, with police, but gave a vastly different account than what Leslie gave. He said Leslie had planned everything herself and he didn't even know about it while it was happening and found out afterwards and that his whole thing afterwards was he was just trying to protect Leslie and, you know, and, you know, help his helpless wife or whatever. I don't know. Investigators did not believe him. They're like, mm, nope, you're lying. So as a show of good faith, Mike said he saved some evidence for the police to show that he was the good guy and going to help them. It was the butcher knife that was used to kill Janie. It was at the bottom of a lake near Mike's parents' house. I wouldn't say that's holding on to evidence. I would say that's getting rid of, and now you're trying to be like, oh, uh, no, I saved it for you. It's at the bottom of a lake. But they did find it after about 15 minutes of diving. I mean, nobody else is going to find it. That's true. Yeah. So they did find it. If you want to keep something safe, that's a good place to put it, I guess. (laughs) At the bottom of a lake. Uh, But they did find it uh, with his direction. So... So they are both, com- you know, convicted or they're both like arrested for this. And, and anyways, they go to trial. So Leslie's trial was first. They were tried separately and it began in May 2004. So the next year she pleaded not guilty by reason of mental defect. And she said she had a horribly toxic relationship with Mike and that she was under extreme duress, seeing as that she was a abused and battered woman at his hands, which very well she could be. Leslie stated that Mike would call her fat and ugly and force her to wear short skirts and tight tight tops and dictated when and how long she could go to the gym and would hit her if she disobeyed anything he said. She also stated that at least once a week, Mike would get angry, call her names, punch and kick her and pull her hair. And she even claimed at one point that he had shot her with a pellet gun. She said Mike forced her to commit the murder and that Mike told her if she didn't do that, then he would kill her and and Janie, kill both of them. So Leslie said she never wanted to, but Mike began to abuse her and threw against the wall when she refused to do it. And so she felt like she had to because she was going to die if she didn't. So she always freely admitted that she was the one who committed the actual murder, but stated it was because she was being controlled by Mike and kind of being brainwashed by him. She said she changed everything she was for him and that everything turned into the money for him, which is like, well, you can't say you weren't warned, you know, but prosecutors reminded the jury that Leslie had plenty of opportunity to turn around and do the right thing. Even in the show, they were like at the crime, like when you're about to commit the crime, you walk into the house, you'd be like, mom, Mike told me to come here and kill you. He has a plan to commit murder, like th- this plan to murder you. Right, let's go to the police right now. And like she could have done that literally seconds before she committed the crime, but she didn't. So uh, at one point during the trial, the prosecution had Leslie look at a crime scene photo and identify the individual in each of the photos in the in the in the photo. The photo is in the photo. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I think so. Okay, all the photos in the photo were of her, all of them. So. Her mother never stopped loving and caring about her, even through all their tough times. Like that was her little girl. So it's kind of sad that like they pointed, like it was in the show is like they pointed at it and she's like, that's me. That's me. That's me. I mean, pictures of her everywhere. They loved her so much. So at the end of her trial, the jury were released to decide Leslie's fate. And after hours of meeting, the jury returned with a verdict of guilty of capital murder, which automatically meant life without parole. So five months after Leslie's trial, Mike had his own and his defense pointed the finger at Leslie. They stated he was definitely not the one that committed the murder. She freely admitted she was the one that committed the murder. So he was innocent. Uh, But prosecutors said his manipulation, scheming and control of Leslie basically put his hand on that knife with her. They stated he was equally culpable. Without Mike, Leslie would not have killed her parents. 
And there's something to that as well. So when the jury came back, they agreed that he was guilty of first degree murder and he received 60 years in prison. He does have the possibility of parole, I think. So both of these people, I look them up on, you can find like Arkansas, like inmates basically, and both are still incarcerated. Mike is scheduled for release in 2035, at which point he will be 81 years old. He still maintains that he's innocent of anything, of course. I disagree. I agree. I agree with that, especially because the couple that were so overtaken with each other, they divorced after their convictions, of course, and... Leslie's record in prison, you can look at anything they've been in trouble for. It's unremarkable. And I saw a picture of her. She looks like a soccer mom. Like she looks totally bland. And Mike looks like a skis bag. And he has quite the prison. He keeps getting in trouble all the time for different things. He's in trouble all the time. So, I mean, that's where it stands that they're both in prison. They'll probably be there till they, well... Leslie will sure be for sure be there till she dies. And she was like 27 when she went to prison. That's your whole life in prison. And you let some guy ruin your life. You listen to some skis bag when your parents who unconditionally loved you and wanted the best for you and gave you everything are trying to help you and love you. And you pick this skis bag. Listen, ladies, you have a mind of your own. You're not stupid. Use it. That's what I have to say about that. Yeah. Also, the Mike McCools of the world are disgusting. Agreed. But what Leslie did was unforgivable. Her parents loved her very much. And I hate that. So, love your parents. They're not here for don't, her. Don't murder them. Don't murder them. Goodness. Yeah, especially, I mean, they're not here forever. But especially if you murder them, they're not going to be there for very long. <laughs> That's true. And you know, it's, I was thinking, I was like, she gave up all opportunity to ever become a mother, to ever have like a flourishing career, to be the soccer mom. She gave all that up. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Anyway, oh. for for Mike McCool, I'll show you a picture of him. Yeah. For, mm. And I mean, at some point when you get divorced that many times, it's probably your fault. <laughs> I. That, that's my feeling. It's sort of like, um, what's the, the saying where it's like, if you run into one a-hole you ran into an a-hole. If you run into a-holes all day, you're it's probably you. the a-hole. It's like Michael Scott, fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me twice. What does he say? Uh, I don't remember. You know what I'm talking I, about? I, he, does he say like strike three or something? Yes. Yes, it is. This is um, Mike McCool. All that for this guy. Yeah, what a guy. And this is, um, this looks like a bland soccer mom. Yeah, it's, just a, it's a lady. Like a mousy little lady. She kind of looks like um, looks like a teacher. All she needed to do was buy stick with the motorcycle situation. I'll show you what she looked like. She totally changed her appearance for him. I'll show you what. You guys can't see this because this is an audio platform, but I'm showing Andrew pictures. I always like to see what people look like for stuff. Which is why Caitlin hates podcasts. I love podcasts. <laughs> she only likes the podcasts where they put themselves on YouTube and you can see what they look like. That was that was Leslie. And there's another picture of Leslie. Yeah, that's. I'm assuming that's when she got. Yeah, booked. that. That yes, that was in. Because I mean, she like bleached her hair. She wore all this makeup. She totally changed what she looked like. And not gonna lie, before you even showed me the picture of what she used to look like, my guess was, did she have like blonde hair because of him? <laughs> it's like, yep. well, yeah. Remember, she yep. yeah he wanted the blonde bombshell is what he wanted, and she changed everything for him. Don't go changing for nobody. Don't change for anybody. Or do. I don't know. No, don't. Maybe. Bad advice, Andrew. Sometimes unless, it's okay to change. Unless you're doing bad things, then you should change. Yeah. But if you're perfectly fine, don't change. Ch- change or don't, I'm not your boss. Like, I don't know I don't know what you want from me. But yeah. Sometimes it's good to change. Sometimes it's not. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that okay was there? very tart. <laughs> very tart lemonade. Oh my gosh. Okay. It's making my mouth water. Hold on. It's like I'm okay, I'm trying to take a drink to to solve your thirst issue, and then you got more thirsty out of it. I got a lot of um, saliva out of it. Mmm. Yum. Anywho, so that was my story today. Very good. Thanks. Well done. Thank, thank you, um, killer couples, for helping me out there. That's right. Don't go changing unless you want to. <laughs> That's the lesson. That's the lesson for today. Just buy a motorcycle. Don't change, go any further. Only change if you're a bad person. Or if you're a good person doing a bad thing and you need to change that one thing or something. That's true. You know what? Like I said, change or don't. 
I'm I, not your I'm boss. I'm not your boss. <laughs> We're not experts. That's for dang sure at anything. Well, what um, you got? What you got this week, Andrew? Uh, first of all, how many Star Wars is? Uh, none. One wrong. Oh, you're watching the Bad Batch. So yeah, you're in one. There's there's at least one. Two. There, it's just the one. Okay. Okay. Yeah, show's still good. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't know what to Episode say Episode three, it. is that right? Yes. See, I won't be watching this because I'm not interested, so we won't be able to talk about it. Yeah. And there's like going to be 16 episodes, so it's going to take too long. That's so long. I know. What's out next, Marvel-wise? Is it that Loki? Loki show, I guess? Okay. Loki or um, Black, Black Widow? Widow? I'm down for both. Can't wait to watch either of them, both of them. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Okay. Uh... What what have you what have you been looking what are you looking at? You have a devilish look on your face, like you have something you're saving. Um, I do have a couple of other things to talk about. Well, I have something. Well, three, but only one of them I want to talk about okay. more than the second. First off, I want to say I got a cinnamon roll as big as my head this weekend. And did you just look at it, or did you ingest it? I framed it. Okay. No, I ate it. I warmed it up and I ate it. Not at one time. Oh my gosh. I would have puked, but I did eat it uh, throughout the weekend a little bit until I finished it. Was it big, as big or bigger than the ones you get at Sue's and Jonesboro? Bigger. Okay, wow. They were massive. It was massive, but it was so good. And it was a day old and it was still good. I got a half off. C- cinnamon rolls can stay good oh, for yeah, a bit. That's yeah, that's He was like, I, was, I, was, I looked in the window and I was like, oh, all the cinnamon rolls are gone. And I was like, wait, are those cinnamon rolls out there? He's like, yes, but they're a day old. And I was like, I don't care. He's like, okay, they're half off. I'm like, give me 10. But I didn't because they were so big. It's, you just sound like um, Liz Lemon on 30 Rock when she goes into a donut shop. And she's like, when do y'all start throwing away the old donuts? <laughs> <laughs> that is me. But they had it like on this rack just like behind him. And I was like, well, those look like cinnamon rolls. Are those cinnamon rolls? He's like, yeah, but they're they're a day old. I was like, I don't care. Please hand it to me. A day old is not enough for, no. to deter me. I was like, it could be a week old and I'll still eat it, dude. Come on. Come on. Half off is just a perk of that. Um, yeah. I have other things, but uh, we'll, t- we'll take turns. Yeah, let's okay. do that. Okay. Um, I watched a couple episodes of a really terrible anime called Ghost Stories. Sounds terrible. I only watched it because I'd heard like weird things about it. Like what? Um, basically the the dub they did for it for the english language Mm -hmm. is complete nonsense and has nothing to do with the actual show like what it was supposed to be is that true it is true because the uh the show didn't do very well in japan Mm. and somebody had the rights for it and was like i don't care what y'all do just do something and uh so basically the script writers and actors just started just ad-libbing all kinds of nonsense like um there, there's like lots of weird lines. One of the characters is like randomly like a super judgmental Christian, which is not in the original show at all. Hmm. But she'll just be like, well, that homosexual is probably in hell now or something. Like a bunch of like weird edgy what? internet humor from the early 2000s. What? There's like one line where it says like, monsters only eat bad people like Republicans and we're too young to vote. Oh it's my like, God. What? That's a good one. Oh, I like There's all kinds of weird stuff like that. It's It's not worth watching. There's clips on YouTube which will show you what you want to see, which is the weird stuff. Okay. So just watch the YouTube stuff. And if you you've want. seen the whole thing? I just saw a couple of episodes and I was like, I don't need this. Do you watch the Castle- Castlevania? Castlevania? Yeah. No, I haven't watched it. I've watched the first season. It was actually, I'm not an anime person. You know this, but it was actually pretty good. Caitlin's the most anime person. I could, I could name Sailor Moon. Does that count? That's a good start. Um, I, Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Yeah. Castlevania. Yeah. You're doing great. You're doing great. What else you got? I know you got more. What about the one where you got to catch them all? Oh, it's Pokemon. Yeah, there you go. Was Is Avatar anime? No, because it was made in America or by oh. Americans. Oh, okay. But it's done anime style. Okay, so not Avatar. Um, I think that's all I got. Wait. Um, I don't know if you would care for it because... Is it, Yu-Gi-Oh? Yu-Gi-Oh is an anime. Okay. I don't know if you'd care about it because it plays off the tropes of like fighting anime like Dragon Ball Z. Uh There's a show called One Punch Man. Have you ever heard of it? Mm -mm. It's really funny. But like I said, maybe it wouldn't matter to you because it plays off some of the stuff. But like basically the story is this guy who just one day decided he was going to be a superhero. So he started working out a bunch until his hair all falls out. And now he's so strong that he beats everybody in one punch and he's really bored. So weird. It's very silly. Um... 
I do know a couple anime movies, I guess. Well, they're Studio Ghibli. Is that anime? That is all anime. Okay, it's Studio Ghibli stuff. Yeah, like uh, Ponyo. Ponyo, House Moving Castle, Spirited Away. Um, there's more. I don't know. Princess Mononoke. Princess Mononoke. Nausicaa, Mononoke. The Valley of the Wind. See, you know. Ca- Castle Cagliostro Ca- or whatever it's called. It's a loop in the third movie that oh. they did. I don't know that one. Um, but you know. You know. I know. I know anime. I'm Mr. Anime. I am not. But like also not really. No, you're not. One Punch Man's pretty good though. I think it's on Netflix or at mm. least it was. You should check that out. Okay. It's my turn. That's my only anime recommendation for you is the show you definitely wouldn't like. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. Um, I have a really important word that I learned this weekend. Is it vehemently? Because I heard you say it during the podcast. So I was like, that's a, it's a wild word to just be pulling out. No, I know that word. Okay. It's a it's a more important more important word than that. Um, you know where I'm going with this? Annulment. Well, I I don't know <laughs> what. Why would, why would you? <laughs> I don't know. Why would? Because we were talking about under- divorced people. Oh, okay, no. Um, it is in fact prenup. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> um, it is in fact the word chuggy. Oh, that thing. That word. Yeah, basic. Uh, uh, so I was on TikTok and I was like. I think this is proof you're too old for TikTok. I, it, it, no, it's not. But I did. I was like, it was an old, it was somebody my age that, that was talking about Chugi. And I was like, I don't know what that means. And so I had to Google it. And I Googled Chugi. And it was like, well, then that makes me Chugi that I had to look it up. And it's an endless cycle. So what it is, is it's like somebody that's like basic. They think they're trendy with things that were trendy in like the 2010s. Like live, laugh, love signs. And... Is that just like basic things? There was yeah. one example. Oh, bo- boss babe, boss girl. I, I saw it um, somewhere. I saw it like the day before you mentioned it on Facebook. Oh, really? Yeah. And I looked it up and it was like, um, the, the explanation I saw was essentially, you're basic. Yeah, you're basic. But like 2010 basic. Not like basic right now with White Claw. It's like non-trendy. It's like 2000. Oh, so this is like the stuff... <laughs> What is chu- this is from the New York Times. What is chuggy? You know it when you see it. Out of touch, basic, a new term to describe a certain aesthetic is gaining popularity on TikTok. So things that are chuggy are like Pinterest, Dunder Mifflin shirts, Lily, what's her face, Pulitzer designs, um, standing in front of walls that have sayings, furry boots, uh, minion memes, Eos lip balm, um, <laughs> like fraternity and sorority flags anything that's like boss babe girl boss barrel curls straight barrel curls which you don't know what that is but i sure don't anyways i was like wow that's i'm feeling very called out by that because i had to google what chuggy meant so that means i am in it i'm a chug too old for tiktok i'm a chug that's what it's called a person who is chuggy is a chug hmm i don't like the sound of that chuggy that you're no i don't like the the noun version of it chug yeah it doesn't it doesn't roll off as well it sounds weird and gross to me when chug. you say it that way chug yeah don't mm. don't so anyways i was i was laughing a lot at that because <laughs> i was like wow am i chug you were live laugh loving it oh my gosh you did it you went there i sure did good job nobody can stop me okay what's your next thing nobody can stop me Okay. Cancel culture, come and get me. You can't. Okay. Because I'm I'm too edgy for you. Um, I watched the worst show ever. It's called Mortal Kombat Conquest. Where did you find it at? It's on HBO Max. Oh. I remember watching a little bit of it when I was younger. It came out in like 98 or so. Oh, it's over. And it would, okay. it would air after WCW Monday Nitro on TNT. Wow. And I remember, usually it was on late enough that I would fall asleep so I couldn't watch it. Mm -hmm. And also, I remember watching it and being like, this is bad, isn't it? Like, Mm -hmm. I was too young to be able to discern things are bad, but I was like, this isn't good, right? Like, I want to like this, but it's terrible. It's so much, it's so much more fun to watch now because I understand it being terrible and Mm -hmm. why it's terrible. And it is awful. Um, The, (laughs) there's like weird stuff. Like, one of the, the acting is atrocious. It is like the worst acting ever. The seems on par for Mortal Kombat stuff. Uh, it's worse than most of it. Ooh, that's it's, bad. It's probably on par with like Annihilation, which is that really terrible movie. It's bad. Um, it, this did come out after Annihilation. Uh, there's there's like one character named Jin who's in it for like two episodes before she dies. 
Oh. Yeah, spoiler. And like everything she says is dubbed over. So I don't know if it was like the mic was bad or or if her acting was so bad they couldn't understand her or what the deal is. But Ooh, every, every all of her lines are overdubbed, which is very strange. Um oh what oh it there's a lot of bad uh, special effects, as you would imagine. It's a nineties T V show. Yeah. And there's like weird backgrounds and Ugh. foreground stuff that's like really bad CG from the time. Ugh. It looks like a nineties FMV game. What is FMV? Full motion video. Oh. So it's like some of those games where they would have like actual actors on like a green screen usually. Barf. Yeah, they're terrible. Um the main character is Kung Lao and he doesn't wear his hat, so that's garbage. Oh. Throw it in the bin. Okay. Um yeah, this it's, it's a really bad show. I recommend it. Uh <laughs> It's horrible. Please watch it. Yeah, it's a good, it's a fun bad. And if you do, bad. tweet at Andrew or something so he knows one other person in this world watched it. Yeah, I was tweeting about it and didn't get a single like or retweet I, yesterday. I, I have no, I have nothing to add to it. I'm sorry. It's it's really wild. Um, also, the the they, the they girls in the show um, wear the most ridiculous clothes. It is, little, little is scanty, real trashy scantily looking. Scantily clad. Oh, yeah. There's like a character named Vorpax. I'm like... Uh, why it's a made-up character for the show what is that name and i was like why isn't she just jade she's wearing a green outfit and everything why isn't this just no jade? it has to be different it's, Andrew. it's vorpax whoever that is it's different um the only person whose name i would rec- recognize from the show is christana loken christana loken however you say her name i don't know she was in terminator 3 she was the lady robot oh okay cool yeah that's about all she's known for though cool um yeah the, the, it's really uh, also everything is techno so it's a lot of like that one uh i don't know if they've played that song but but it is like it is all just never-ending techno and cool. sometimes kind of exhausting yeah you're like oh my brain shut up <laughs> yeah i was like okay i've watched five episodes i gotta stop now <laughs> my my ears need a break Get to the part where Quan Chi's in the show, you jerks. Fights. What else you got? Um, I've been playing God of War, the newer one. You like it? I do. It cool. seems like it's going to be pretty long. That's always good, though. You get Longer what you pay than for. I expected. You get you get what you pay for, though. Like yeah, and I don't even get... know if I paid for this. Oh, it, it might have been a, one of the free games on oh, Plus. Oh, I don't oh, remember. Okay, okay. I don't think I bought it. <laughs> I was like, how did you steal it? <laughs> if it's online. If I, yeah, I don't think I bought it. But it's if right. I did, it was. It would have been really cheap if I did. Uh, it's it's good. I never played any of the older ones, so I can't compare it to those. Yeah, me neither. I get the feeling this is better as far as like story because like I always got the impression of the old ones like it's like I'm Kratos and I'm a bad ass cool guy mm-hmm. and look at me hanging out with these ladies and their boobies. <laughs> and uh, I I didn't do it. They had the boobies That's in the game. That's how it was. It was uh, like that back then. Yeah, I'm probably like over halfway through. And I haven't seen a single boobie. Nice. So. Okay, stepping it up. Yeah. More yeah. about the gameplay, less about the... Yeah, he's things. always a jerk to his kid. Aw. <laughs> he's just like, boy. It's just like real life. Yeah. Well, it just cracks <laughs> me up because he, call, he calls his son... He just calls him boy the whole time. He's like, boy, help me with this. Or Aww. boy, what does that say? <laughs> oh, good father. Yeah. Well, the boy is kind of a jerk at some point. Oh. Um, sounds like... Sounds like he, he kind of, you know... Yeah. It's kind of was raised, maybe. He becomes a jerk when he finds out that um, he's he's part God... Because Kratos is a god. So and when he gets that privilege in his yeah, childhood. Yeah. Yeah. He's a real jerk to everybody. Suddenly, He's like, I'm tired of your little problems and stuff like saying that to people. Excuse me? But what really pisses me off is um, one of the things is you press square and he'll shoot an arrow at enemies cool. or you'll use it to like solve puzzles. And during this part of the game, when he's being a jerk, he always, go, every time you do it, he goes, whatever. I was like, I will slap your face. Boy, I will beat you. <laughs> Talk to me with that mouth. Talk to me. Watch what yeah. happens. It's pretty good. Cool. I've got to fight Norse gods, I guess. Congratulations. I killed one of them. Who? Magni? He's one of Thor's sons. Oh, okay. It's either Magni or Modi. We killed both of them, actually. Oh. Yeah. After a while. Spoilers for this game from Thanks like three years ago. Thanks a lot for that. Yeah. Um, I watched two movies. Ooh, what'd you watch? Anything good? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like no. Anything as good as Mortal Kombat Conquest, mm, the best TV show? Better than that. So the first one I watched was Woman in the Window, which stars Amy Adams. Amy Adams. Um, that's based on a book, isn't it? E- I would think so, yes. I think so. Everything's based on a book. Yeah. Except yeah. for Mortal Kombat. 
Okay. Uh, so the woman in the window, it was okay. I would give it out of a hundred of percent of like loving it. I would give it like a, a good solid 70, 70. It is passes. This, is this a Netflix movie? I think so. Is it on Netflix? Yes. I believe I watched okay. it on Netflix. I think it sounds like it is. Yes. Yes, I did. I watched it on Netflix and it was, I mean, it kept me intrigued and I was ready to know what happened and it's kind of, unsus- it was kind of sad, but it's okay. Turn what, what is it? It's without a, spoiling it. Like what's the basic setup? So Amy Adams is an agoraphobic child psychiatrist. That's where you don't go outside? Yes. Okay. She does not go outside. Um, there's been some stuff happening and she's just kind of depressed and she um, makes friends with this person and then she witnesses something and then she kind of goes crazy and she starts spiraling and she, anyway, there's, there's a mystery behind it and stuff happens. So, um, it was, it was okay. It was, you should, if you like true crime, it'd be an interesting watch. Not the most riveting, but it's pretty good. Okay. I need, I need it to be more than that if I'm going to watch it. That's right. Yeah, I'm, I'm too old for pretty good. I need it to be trash or great. <laughs> what? Or do you have anything else on there? Uh, no, I've just been watching Psych still. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, you I sent w- me a Snapchat at one point, and it was in the background. I was like, Psych. Oh okay. I was like, <laughs> what? I, I thought you were gonna say I sent a snap about it, and I was like, what was it? No, no, it was just in the background. Um, the show gets weirder as it goes. Psych does. Yeah, yeah. like. Every episode is like a weird special episode. Like mm-hmm. it's like, oh, this is the episode where it's a mansion murder mystery thing, where you know mm-hmm. this typical t- movie thing with like, we're all in a mansion. I have invited you to my mansion. Oh no, the lights went out and somebody's dead. Now we have to all. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Well, what's really weird is the episode where they go to like a Twin Peaks town. Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah. Like it's straight. Everything about it is straight up Twin Peaks. <laughs> not the not the uh, the Hooters type restaurant in Little Rock. No, is that is that a thing called? Yeah, there's like a oh, Hooters-type wow. restaurant in Little Rock called Twin Peaks. Wow. You didn't know that? No. How did I know that? I guess, I don't know. I guess because you're a pervert. You're a sex pervert. Am I? I guess so. Who's I don't been know. to a Hooters? Raise your hand. Me. Yeah, exactly. Never of my own volition. Whatever, shut up. <laughs> um, yeah, the Twin Peaks episode is really weird because they straight up like used the music from Twin Peaks. That's weird. Yeah, it's a very strange... They, they they ape everything it's obviously like an homage or whatever yeah. which is fun but like every episode is like that and also the corner character he's really annoying uh he becomes more of a guy in those later seasons okay and he's just kind of annoying and i don't like him i need you to know that i just finished this glass of chick-fil-a lemonade yeah it was very good and it wasn't super pulpy at the end of it, it w- i drank till the end of it and it was enjoyable I like the pulp in the lemonade. I don't. I like it's a good li- stuff. I like a little bit, but I've literally been getting mouthfuls of it. <laughs> and it was, put I was the like, whole, put the whole lemon in there. No, don't. Oh yeah. Anyway, but that's. I think that's everything that I've been looking at. One more movie after you? watching. Yeah. Yes, you did say you watched two, and what? you've only told us about one. So yeah. there must be there's another one minus one equals zero. The, uh, I said it wrong. Yes. Two. I, <laughs> What am I doing? <laughs> Two minus one. Yes. Andrew threw his mic down. Um, it, no, it's good. Yeah, I'm okay, good. Okay. You good? Okay. I, as good as I'll be. Yeah. Okay. So the other movie I watched, I think was also on Netflix. It was called The Clove Hitch Killer. Clove Hitch Killer. And the clo- Clove Hitch is a type of knot they learned in Boy Scouts. I think it's the Cloverfield Hitch Killer. No, it's not. It's the next one in the Cloverfield first. Thank God it's not. But um, it does have, I think his name is Dylan McDermott. That's a guy, yeah. Is he play? Is he the one from American Horror Story? I don't know if he's in that, but he's in stuff, yes. I, I'm going to, I think he's in it. And if it is, he's a very versatile actor. He's in like... Um, yes, it's Dylan McDermott. Dylan McDermott. He was in a show called Hostages. Which was a really terrible show. Don't watch it. Okay. It I went won't. for one season. Okay. I won't watch it. Yeah. Um, so, Clovage Killer. Anyways, it's um, it's pretty good. It wasn't what I expected. I liked it. I would give it an 85%. I would recommend it over... I would watch Clovage Killer and then Woman in the Window. So, Cloverfield Hitch Killer. Yes. Is good. It's pretty good, yeah. Lady in a Window or whatever it's called is okay. It's pretty good, yeah. 
Um, and Mortal Kombat Conquest is wretched. Watch it no. immediately. It's on HBO Max. Sadly, they don't have the animated series from... They had like a kid's show, like animated uh, Mortal Kombat series back in the 90s. Mm-hmm. Like, why? The whole point of Mortal Kombat is that you're going to watch people get their heads chopped off or whatever. <laughs> like, why are you making it's a kid's show? Graphic. It's like how they had that RoboCop cartoon. Why? I know. I was like, what's the point? I, you've missed it. You missed the point. Like, RoboCop's not supposed to be a fun kid's show. It's... A biting satire of American society and super violent and blah de blah. Yeah. Oh, also, I'm still in the um, Throne of Glass series. A lot more magic. I'm digging it a lot more. A lot less, a lot less smushy and mushy or whatever you called it. Um, less mushy, more smushy, I believe is what we said. There's less of everything of that. Oh, no. I no, want more smushy. I'm grateful there's less of it. I'm sure you wanted more. I want magic. We established you're a pervert. Wizards and elves and and and. Old magic and fey and fairy. And I'm getting more of that, and I'm grateful for it. Yeah, if you say so. I do. And I think that's about it. I think that's what all I got. Yeah, woo-woo. Let's go home. That's our thing. Woo-woo. Yeah, that's what we've always said. Woo-woo. Woo-woo. Okay, so we're going to bring it back in PR style. Hello, everyone. Thanks again for stopping by our session with us. This has been Paint the Town Dead. I've been half of your host. I've been Caitlin. That's been Andrew. Woo woo! Murder train is leaving the station. Woo woo! <laughs> That's pretty good. Um, but anyway, we've been Paint the Town Dead. We drop episodes every Tuesday. You can catch us on Facebook at Paint the Town Dead. You can catch us on Instagram, Paint the Town Dead, all one word. You can catch us on Twitter at PTTDPod, and you can email us at PTTDPod at gmail.com. Please be sure to subscribe on anything you can, rate five stars, anything you can, like anything you can, share, comment. Please help us out. Anything you do helps us out greatly. We really appreciate it. Send uh, money. I mean, we'll, if you want to. Yeah, we'll send it. money. Um, guys, you are the heart of this. We love doing this for you. We also love hanging out and learning about crimes committed in our state um, and sharing that story with you. Hopefully somebody can gain some perspective from it. Um, But again, thank you all for listening. We appreciate it. We'll see you next Tuesday with another episode of Paint the Town Dead. Goodbye, everybody. Woo-woo!